for me personally, having only been employed for two years of my professional life, um, I realized that any environment, whether it's a, a corporate environment, has a glass ceiling if it's been created by others. And hence the need for me to create my own ladder. You know, everybody talks about climbing the corporate ladder. Um, that's why as an entrepreneur, I felt the need to create my own environment that has no ceiling. Um, the world is your oyster. The sky is the limit. It is what you make of it. Um, and so my experience with glass ceilings has been very different to what a lot of women would say are glass ceilings because I decided to leave an environment that has um, limits and I decided to get an environment as difficult as it is to navigate that would be able to allow me to be who I am um, and not have these perceived ceilings. I think being an entrepreneur the challenges that I might experience is being able to get into established markets. Um, the only way to grow your business is to take business from somebody else. So it is a cutthroat uh, dog eat dog world and for that, for, for you to survive, you have to have a thick skin. For you to survive, you have to see things differently. Um, you have to constantly be pursuing what you, you need to do to survive. But at some point, you shouldn't be surviving, you should be thriving. Um, and part of growing my business is I need to get to a point where I'm not living from one client to another client um, or have a very short runway because, you know, as an entrepreneur, you have three to six months of a runway as you're starting up your business. But at some point, you need to know that, OK, we covered, we've got investors, we've got, you know, a strong market position and now we can start thriving and constantly evolving because, you know, look at companies like Kodak. If they were not too comfortable with where they are, they could have probably been able to pivot their ideas and do something that's relevant for the current market, but they didn't. So those such companies don't exist. So I think for me, ceilings don't exist because I, create, I decided to create my own, my own company. So women participation in technology or in entrepreneurship or technology entrepreneurship um, has always had smaller numbers um, over the past couple of years. But I, I do feel that women are feeling a sense of it is possible to start my own business. Um, the challenges that women have is now having to balance being a mother, being a wife, being um, a, a homemaker. Or somebody like myself, I'm not a mother, I'm not a wife, <laughs> but I'm a, I'm a thoroughbred entrepreneur. But there are sacrifices that come along with it because if I had to now decide to start a family, get married, it all set me back. That is a reality. Um, so I've been lucky in a sense that I don't have to sacrifice or compromise too much. All I'm doing now is just building a business. But I've also been unlucky that it hasn't given me the space all the time to start a family, which is something I would certainly like to do. Um, and hopefully at some point I'll have an opportunity to do it. But the more you into it, it becomes more difficult to actually stop and take a break because now you are rising, rising. At some point you'll peak uh, or you'll keep rising and rising, but everything else might have to sink. So it's, it's a tough balance, lots of sacrifices along the way. And I think for women, it is tough because you do have to make that decision. It's a much more difficult decision uh, to make than our male counterparts. Um, so hoping that there are more women who live a balanced life, are able to grow successful companies without having to take or do make too many sacrifices in the future. But it's one of those, probably the reason why we are not represented is because of the tough sacrifices we have to make. Either whether you are climbing the corporate ladder and in a corporate environment or building your own successful um, entrepreneurial venture, my philosophy is that you have nothing to lose because it's all about seeking opportunities. And as women, we tend to be scared to ask. Um, as women, we scared to to have a seat at the table and have a voice. And you have nothing to lose by asking, right? Especially being in business, it's, every day it's about asking people for. Uh, business opportunities um, and so I think don't be scared of going beyond because otherwise you're not going to really build yourself in that corporate environment um, you have to be noticed you have to be seen um, and you have to create a niche for yourself people need to choose you because they know that by going with Matsim D said this is what I'm going to get and I think also 
We need to focus on the substance of things versus the form. Um, with social media and the digital world, there's a lot of form over substance. Um, it's a scary thing because when you engage somebody on a social media platform versus when you're engaging them when they're actually doing the work and presenting themselves and delivering, it tends to be two separate things. So I think people need to be honest with who they are um, and not sell a different story to what you're actually able to deliver. So yeah, I think be true, be authentic. Um, your energy needs to be great because I always get this. People will say, Matsu, we're giving this opportunity because of you, not because of any other reason, but because we want to work with you. So it talks to how I present myself, how I project myself. So make sure that your energy is clean because that sometimes without saying anything, people can pick up on your energy and then choose to either work with you or not work with you because the energy does align.